Hello, everyone. It's Cheryl from Baker's Cart Art and to be painting tonight with you. This is a little later than I usually go on. So um, I welcome you all in. So thanks for coming in. It's nice to see everybody joining in. I'm going to paint a little fall project, a more Halloween project tonight. I just invented a whole bunch of gourds and they are so cool. I'm pretty excited paint them and I see you guys are popping on so say hello when you come in let me know where you're watching from I know my internet connection is not great tonight but um let me know if there's any if you would grant StreamYard permission I can see your name in the comments if not just say hello and let me know who you are and we will get started in a minute it's just so good to see everybody I don't know I'm usually not up this late um it's only nine o'clock where I am I'm in Massachusetts but it just um an early to bed person, but I thought I would try tonight. So here I am and excited to paint with you. I've got a little design here. I want to, I'm going to switch this over so you can see what I'm working on. So say hello. I'd love to, love to hear. I want to give you a good view here of what I'm working on. I've gone through all of these, I have two huge bags of gourds here, I've gone through them. And I, this was the only one that kind of had a little bit of a straight uh, top here. So I'm Thinking of painting, I was just sketching up. I've not painted on one of these before. It's just uh, base coated here with a little gesso. And I'm going to, because I wanted to do a pumpkin, I was originally going to do this as the stem, but you know what I think I'll do is the pumpkin here, a part here. We're gonna have a little pumpkin. I'm gonna do a little bit of a dimensional face on him. And like I said, you're alone. what happens. I'm gonna just base coat uh, the pumpkin and the hat. The hat's gonna be black. The pumpkin is going to be orange. I've just got done painting a whole bunch of pumpkins on a project and it's right here in front of me and I'll show it to you um, after a bit. If we have time, I'm sure we will. This won't take too long. And again, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to bring your comments up here. So just say hello. Let me know any questions as we go along. Hey, hey another Cheryl and Cindy. Um, Chris. Hey, Eric. Thank you guys for watching. So I'm going to, I like to base coat sometimes my pumpkins in a yellow to give them a little bit of a brighter look. And then I'm gonna put in some shading to make it look like the little grooves. So I'm gonna just go on here because it's white underneath. I'm gonna put a quick color on because they're funny shaped. I just have a little roll of masking tape to sit that on, it works perfectly. I'm going to drill a little hole after to hang this. I'll probably use a little bit of like a little jute or something. Hey, Lisa Marie. Thanks for watching my neighbor and Kim, you are my neighbor to the north. I'm just using my ordinary acrylics tonight. I've got a variety. I have some, I use the deco art. I use the Josanya. I use my, uh, I love my liquid tubed paints and we're just going to put a quick coat on there. I'm dying to see how this works. I'm always coming on with you guys and just, and just winging it. And I uh, appreciate you your patience for coming along for the ride. So tonight my segment on craft around the clock and I'm also on my Tinker art page. Thank you for following me in both places. And if you'd like, let me know which of my groups you are here from. You are, you are Lisa Marie, just down the street. Lisa Marie's in the next town over. Hi, Gail. Um, thanks for popping on. I appreciate it. Gail is one of my new um, Cardis members and I'm so excited. And Gail, where you're new, if you have any questions about how anything works, let me know. We're going to gather uh, next week live by Zoom. I hope you can join us. We're going, to, we're going to learn how to put simple figures in your paintings. So don't be afraid of painting people, just little simple figures. Okay, so I'm just doing a little yellow to brighten that up. So when I go over with orange, it's just a little brighter. I'm going to paint in that hat too. These are cool. I got a little stem. I can hold it by here while I'm painting. And thank you guys for uh, saying hello. I appreciate it. A lot of painting. I, I teach decorative painting. I teach acrylic painting. I do a little watercolor. I'm a big sketcher. I love to sketch. Maybe I'll do a little set segment on sketching and, and how easy that is to incorporate art into your everyday with just a little sketchbook in your, in your bag. Black is great, covers really well. 
and let's just get this little it's going to be like a little party hat i thought at first i would paint it as a witch's hat but i really um don't really want to make like the brim i'd have to form that out of felt maybe and and you guys on the craft around the clock are so super crafty and um i still have trouble with bows learning because you guys are great and if you have caught the craft around the clock group look for the facebook and there is crafting every day during the week from pretty much sun up to sundown every 45 minutes there's someone doing a new craft it is so cool and i'm learning all kinds of fun things these days oh lisa marie sketching yeah I, i'm a big urban sketcher i, I sketch e everywhere i go i love it and it's a nice little way it's just a little sketch with pencil i take a fine marker waterproof of course sketch over my lines a little bit sometimes i just wing it and just go straight with the ink and then I watercolor in, and it's a nice way to stay watercolor because you're not having to uh, do much but fill in the lines. You're just sort of painting in the lines. Okay, so here we've started. I'm going to grab my hair dryer so I can dry it up a little bit. Hey, Norma, thanks for watching. Thank you, guys. I'm going to just grab my, my blow dryer and, um, because I just want to not make you sit here and watch paint dry, but I am gonna mute it so you don't have to listen to it because the noise is a little much sometimes. So let me just mute you for a moment. I will dry this guy out. There, that's got a nice base coat on there. Oh, Lisa Marie, oh, I don't know. I haven't, um, I, they haven't scheduled anything with me at the library, but I'll tell you, I do have a class actually right in Hudson next week. Uh, Serendipity, downtown Hudson. I don't know if you've gone in there yet, but it's a fabulous, fun shop. Sell my paintings there and there's so many cool crafts and art there. And we do classes. I've got that coming up and I've got to schedule um, for the fall, some of them. Uh, locally so if you're not on my email list or you if you don't you if you follow me on on facebook you will um see what's going on or send me a message and i'll add you to my email list i do a few in-person uh, classes not as many as i used to but um i do a lot more online these days but i still love to see your faces in person she's yeah lisa marie um down at um, City, you can find some nice classes. She does kids' camps in the summer. Kids do all kinds of fun things. And so I'm just going with my now, and I'm just getting a little coat. And then I'm going to just put in some burnt sienna for those little lines, and then I'm going to shade um, and highlight. So shade and highlight just gives our objects dimension. This is a dimension. 3D object to start, but you know what I mean. We're going to make them look a little bit bumpy. Um, anybody out there paint gourds? I've not done it before, like I said. And have you guys done it? I'd love to know. And 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 what are you painting these? Are you guys painters? Do you are you painting? Know where you are on your creative journey. And any questions as we go? Like I said, I'm um, so this is kind of fun. I'm having a blast on the craft round clock segment, and I'm also on my page. And it's a little bit like painting sometimes. Finished with minutes to spare, and there, perfect little holder. Uh, that tape roll is perfect. <laughs> wow. Well, I think everybody has their their own speed that they go on, and and I do um, very beginners, and even if you've never painted before or if you're experienced, I try to go step by step and slowly. I know sometimes I go right along on these segments, but I try to make it easy for everybody to get started. This could be like a little party hat here, and I was going to paint a little black cat on there, but I've gone ahead and painted the black, so that's really not going to work. So we will paint a little something, maybe purple bats. Thing, spider web, something on that black hat, plus a little design. I know I want to put polka dots because I am a big polka dot girl. I love polka dots. 
It's a little see-through in places, so I'm just going to go and give it a little bit of a second coat. Not everywhere, just where I can see through it. I'm going to do a little band around the bottom, probably in yellow. And yellow is very transparent, so it's not going to cover black. So what I'm going to do is make a little scallop design around the edge of the hat, but I'll do it in white first. And then I'll go over it with yellow. Here's my friend Charlotte. Hello, Charlotte. I knew I'd see you tonight. Thanks for popping on. Charlotte is one of my Cardinal Art Membership. My ladies are uh, great painters, and we all hang out every month painting lots of fun things. Hi, Mary. Two years off this October, then. People jumping in and starting to paint. I know paint night, and I have people go out and they actually buy paint. All that I'm so excited because they are um, doing something and, and it's so good for you and it doesn't matter about the outcome the process is the joy is in the process and the process is the is the best but you're going to come out with something fun and cool anyways so okay I'm going to let that dry a little and then I'll do my band uh, this is drying it's a little bit wet give let me give me give me a second I'm going to hit it with the uh, heat gun hang on And I was thinking instead of a traditional little triangle nose for this guy, I'm looking up to see where our time, my timer is. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, but I might do more of a little dimensional, like a real nose shape. We'll see when we get to that. But what we first have to do is get those little grooves that you know are on the pumpkin. And, and that's just a, like, a little shading with some burnt sienna, kind of a red brown. What I'm going to do is just get my round brush out here now. I'm thinning my paint a bit. And it's just these little ridges. You see those little ridges? I'm going to go right around. And I don't mind it being a little wet and sitting it on that tape there. If I wasn't trying to do this in 45 minutes, I might take a little bit more time. But uh, we're going to go right along. Hello, Chris. I love that. You know, I have to tell you, most of my ladies in my group and a lot of them that come out and paint with me are a little older. I'm a little older than that. And um, I've been painting all my life. I love to see people discovering it um, later on in life. And it's funny that your kids think you are hiding their, their your talent from them. But isn't it great to finally have something to do for yourself? I think it's a great thing. I'm so glad you're painting. Hey, Debbie from the beach. Cool. What beach, are, what beach are you at? Where are you? I'm usually up in Maine. I'm coming to you guys in the summertime. I'm home tonight, but um, I'll be back up in days. So I've got the little, just little lines I've just painted in around. And now how we're going to make this look a little dimensional is we've got a little bit of a shadow. And now I'm going to make it a little lighter here. I'm going to go back to my big brush. And to do that, I'm going to highlight with some yellow. So I'm going to re-wet it a little bit with my orange so that I can blend the yellow in. And I'm just doing section at a time. So I've got a little bit of wet paint there. I'm going to dry off orange on my paper towel. I'm going to go right into my yellow. And I'm going to add some yellow there. It's a slight blend right now. You can even go in and try to blend a little bit into that burnt sienna line so it's not just a harsh line. It's a little bit of a soft shade and I'm going to go right around and I'm going to try let me see I'm going to try just going on there with the yellow I think I'm okay just going with the yellow I think it's it just highlights a little better I've got a hair and brush hair there let me scooch that out so I don't think I'm finding the need to having to base coat it with the orange again I'm just going to put some yellow it's going to even show up better when I add a little white to that yellow. But for now, I'm just getting it a little lighter. I'm going to get it so that it looks like it's the bumpy ridges that you find on the pumpkins. Now, I'm adding a little more water to my to my paint. I'm finding, I don't know if it's just the gourd surface or whatever, but it's drying a little quick. 
And when it's a little thicker or it's drying fast, you just add a little water. Simple as that. All right. So, yeah, we're getting a little bit of a highlight there. I'll just go around with the yellow and add a little white to that next and just do another coat that way. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to get that little scallop. I just want a little bit of a scallop edge on the hat. But like I said, yellow's never going to show. Let's put it in white to start. Mexico Beach, Florida. Nice. I, I know we've probably talked on, on, on these lives before, and I am in Florida quite a bit myself because my family's in Orlando, and I get back and forth there pretty much once a month, so... Oh, um, I can give you the get you the traces again, Charlotte, too, if you need it. Thank you for uh, that. Was a long. I just uh, my paint one of the paintings for the membership yesterday, and that's what Charlotte's referring to. And it was a painting of a tractor. Is it behind me? No. Oh yeah, it is. It's down below you. It's down below. I can show it to you after when we have a second. Um, and it was a long one, but when there's a more complicated painting, it's not a recording. Because and start when you want. So I'm just base coating the, I'm gonna have a little scalloped edge. I'm just going right around the edge of the black with white paint, one or two coats, whatever it takes to cover because yellow and orange are tra transparent. So we are going to base coat. Appreciate you guys popping in. See I know different parts of the country, it's, it's earlier. So this is kind of a nice time. I'm sure everybody chance to pop in and we're doing here. So it's just like a little scallop pattern I'm doing. Let me know. I know my uh, internet is weak tonight and I feel like I'm uh, I'm buffering a little bit. Deborah, thanks for popping in. Um, so just be patient. I don't know why it's such a poor connect. I think it was a question when I was recording last night. I, I just don't know how that translated on you there, too. This started, and it's going to be white after, and then a little cute thing on, maybe. Some little Halloween icon. It's not too early for Halloween, right, guys? You can still be painting Halloween. Okay. I'm going to lay that down that way a little bit. And let me know in the comments if the buffering's kind of a pain in the neck because it looks to me like it's a little laggy. So the little burnt sienna lines I have in between, I sort of just painted them in. You can always go back and and get more of a wash so that they're not so uh, solid lines if you if you want. I think it looks fine on here, but sometimes you could just go with a little wash. And that blends into the edges a little bit. And I think I'll shade underneath the hat band once that dries too, because I think uh, the little hat would cut, cast a little shadow on our guy there. And now I'm going to give it a quick shot. And a little last highlight on the ball pumpkin working on the face, which is going to be fun. Hey, Barbara, thanks for popping in. I'm going to mute it. Oh, hey, Cindy, thank you. Yeah, I think it'll be cute when it's done. I've not painted on a gourd before, but I've got a whole bunch, and it'd be cute as Santa's and snowmen, and I've got all kinds of ideas. It's a weird surface. It's a little different. I've got it gessoed there. Um, it's drying. Um, it seems like it dries too fast when I'm blending and, and not fast enough when I want to put the coat, but I'll get the hang of it. Okay, um, last little highlight. I'm taking my paint, and I know I had to thin it down a bit, and to get it to be a little bit brighter, just a corner of my brush in some white. So I'm just light up that a little bit. I'm going to go in the center of each section just to really brighten it up in the middle. It's funny I'm picking up those little brush hairs. Okay. 
I may just keep my paint a little wet when I want to sort of soften that into the edge. And so we're just going to quickly do the centers here. A little brighter. So like a glaze. A glaze is when you have a coat underneath of uh, a dried color and you're going with a little bit of a transparent wash over it. You can build up layers that way. A little bit more white. I've kind of lost that. And once we get this base coating work on the face, and I want to do some crazy eyes. Like I said, I might just do more of a dimensional nose instead of just a little triangle nose for the pumpkin. See how that's starting to look dimensional now? And I'm going to take a little more orange maybe and just, I want to soften the lines a little bit. Just with my orange that I used to base coat, I'm just going up against those lines of burnt sienna. See how it's just softening it a little bit? I'm just kind of obscuring it a little bit. And since we're painting all around, it's just taking a little extra. We're just going to keep turning him. I like the way that looks. It looks dimensional now, not just a, a flat surface. A little quick second coat of my little banner I'm going to put on the edge of the hat. So uh, I think I'll go with like a little filbert brush here in tough shape, that little guy. And um, here, we'll use this one. And it's just a second coat of white. You guys are watching paint dry tonight, I think. And this is just a little party hat like pumpkin's wearing. Once I go on here, or at least the second, put a little shadow under the hat band. I, I'm, what I'm thinking is sort of like a man in the moon on my pump. Like I said, I don't know how that's going to go, but we're going to give it a try. And, uh, okay, cool. I was going to have that base coated maybe before on, and that might have been an idea, but... Maybe a bat, maybe a purple bat on my hat there might get some. Let's get a little full. And I'm going to just sketch. What, what side do I want for the face? I just I guess it doesn't much matter. I'll go right there. I'm just going to paint a little bit, and then I'm going to put polka dots. And uh, like he's wearing a little bat, paint a little bit. It's hard to see with purple, so let's just make them with a little white. Little face. A uh, little bat. I've painted before. They have this little face and kind of a little body. A little slope on the bottom. You can start to see. Can you start to see him there? I'll fill that in and I will go over that with a second coat. I meant to paint the yellow and put a black hat on there, but maybe I'll do a series of these. But this was the best shape for a hat because of that pointy, pointy edge. So let that dry and we might just shade it with some purple. I want to give a little shadow under the hat. So how I'm going to do that is just got a nice flat brush here. I'm going to load it with water. I'm going to do kind of a wash technique. Just loading it with water, dipping the corner into that burnt and just pat it down. So see, you can just pat a little bit, just bend it along the edge. Just a little shadow like the hat on your head. It would be a darker one to the end. It's just going to give it a little more. And you might have to just keep reloading. So I just take a little bit of the corner of the brush again, just pat it, blending color into the water on the brush. And can you see how it's just in one stroke giving me a shadow and a blend? Try to do that a little flatter so you can see it a little better. So you can see how it's just given it a shadow. It's very thin, so it's going to dry back. Okay, so now we've got a little shadow. 
I put a little bit of my finger. It's a weird shape. It's funny to uh, it's taking some get to. I didn't know if anybody answered and if they had these gourds before, but it would be kind of fun to to know. So I'll just go ahead. I'm gonna reach bat that it's tape, but I did put my finger in it. So let me just go and. Get that in. If you've watched me, you know I walk, I paint on the craziest thing. You might have seen me paint on the bowling and made that into a, a snowman. I always find unusual, crazy things to paint. Okay. That is our little. I want to do polka dots on my hat and then. Off of the head, and I'm going to do my little yellow. Poker super simple to do just by using the back end of your. You can just dip it in your paint and just dot it. Depending on what size brush you use, you could get all size. Polka. I really love polka dot. And I am just paint and dab it. And then we're going to give it could be polka dots, you could have done them as stars. This would maybe as a spider web design and put a green spider or a sp green on the black would work. It would be nice with even a black spider web and a little black spider green eyes. I don't know if you saw my spider did on the little the um, You might have seen that. So, okay. We'll put a little eyes and a little shading on that bat when he's ready. But now we're going to work on the face. And I'm going to just give my indication of where that face is going to go with a little piece of chalk. When I paint with acrylics and I want to sketch on the go, I just use chalk. It erases very easily. You do not have to worry about in the line. Kind of um, pretty good to have handy in your paint kit. So let me go back. I'm going to go by my sketch here. And I had a big googly eyes. Gonna have more of a real nose and shape, shape, shape with the same way to these lines. And and kind of a big grin. I was going to do lips, but I think it needs kind of a creepy and and I am putting my hand. I knew these polka dots, um, I'd have to be a little careful it's on the back, so I'll touch up that afterwards. So let's get that face. Let's do a big crazy grin on and he might be kind of it's just going to be kind of a big smile, teeth in. Don't gonna look see. I'm gonna paint the eyeballs all white first, probably a couple coats to get it to cover that orange. And I'm not worried about them being perfect or the same size. I mean, they'll roughly be the size, but let's not um, get caught up on. We just want to have an, a cool whimsical crazy gourd pumpkin i'll give them kind of surprised eyebrows maybe i was having fun and i'll show you this paint in a second that i did and it's all pumpkin faces so i was doing the whole range of crazy pumpkin faces some of them are mad looking and some scared looking and they're just kind of fun and his teeth let's uh let's base coat this whole mouth in white here too Almost fashioned a little like those vintage paper mache pumpkins, you know, those crazy ones with, I can't even describe, but but you know what I mean, those old vintage pumpkins that you saw when you were a kid. Hey, Kit, thanks for joining. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming out tonight to craft. And there. And those will need a second coat, like I said, but we got it started. We got it a little bit there. And it's a little crooked, but I don't care. So I have to really shade now a little bit. I'm going to shade like I did uh, across the bottom of the hat. I'm going to use a brush, some clear water, a little bit of uh, of the, the burnt sienna on the corner of the brush and just use that to shade. Hey, Michelle's here. Yay. Now the now we can get the party started. Hi, Michelle. Michelle's in Florida too. She is one of my online uh, and in-person uh, painting 
buddies. So, and Kim, thank you. Um, Kim, I try to make it look easy, but it is a little easy if you just take it little step by step and, um, and a little bit of practice sometimes with that brush stroke, the way I blend. But really, it's not hard. I make it easy for you. I really do. And I'm just looking for a little brush to, you want to flat usually when you want to dip it into the water and use just a corner. Hey, Regina. Hi, I'm so glad you popped on. I think it's so funny. I know you're down south now and you must be a friend of my cousin, Bob, which I see you guys together a lot. Bob is my cousin. Um, I think I told you that. Okay. So I'm going to shade a little bit now. The crazy little face. Um, I think I want to shade around his eyes first. So let me just take the same technique. I've just loaded my brush with water. I'm patting it a little bit to blend. And I'm going to go right around the eyeball with that brown. It's a red brown. It's a burnt sienna. I'm making a shadow around it to give it dimension so the eyes, like on this crazy eyes, to have his eyes are kind of popping a little bit. So, and don't worry about the chalk lines. You can certainly just erase those later. And every few strokes, I do have to go and get that color to float on there. It's a brush stroke you can practice. I know in my group, sometimes we get together and just practice brush strokes for blending and highlighting. I sometimes use this wash technique and sometimes I just use a wet and wet. Wet and wet would not work right now, but this certainly works. And can you see now his eyes are popping a little bit? He's going to have some shading around the nose. So the nose is protruding. So you would get a little bit of a shadow around. Let's see, I might do it this way. And if I get a shadow in there and then I get the parts that are coming out at you, the closest, a little highlight, it really just reads as being dimensional. It is a small world. I know it's crazy. It is a small world. And I love my little online world here with you guys because I've made so many great friends and painting buddies and creatives. Okay. Can you see it's starting taking shape a little bit? And I'm going to just give them a little one, that little area that I'm getting those those lines out myself that kind of go down here. We can even give a little shadow around the mouth. I'm going to use a little red to outline the mouth. I found with a little painting, I'll show you in a bit, um, that vintagey look. A lot of those eyes and mouths and things are outlined in um, red, which is, I don't know, just kind of, Add to the creepiness factor, I guess. So I'm going to just do a little bit of that. And I've got some like man in the moon pictures pulled up too, just to give me some ideas for shading, um, like underneath the eyebrows with a little bit of a shadow when we paint those in. And I'm going to give it some highlights in a sec too, but let me just deepen that shadow a little bit. Okay. And they would almost get a little bit of a, a little bit of a nostril, just a little bit showing there. And now we'll just get some highlights. Highlights I can probably brush on. I'm using the same yellow like I did for the little sections of the pumpkin. So the nose would be a little tip of the nose would be a little lighter. These little, um, nostrils there. I'm going to put those in a little lighter. And now I'll do just what I did for the middle sections. I'll take my yellow, but I'll add a little white to it. And this is a little different than my shadows. I'm not putting it on with a wash. I'm just dabbing it on. Maybe he'd be a little wrinkly here. He might get a little highlight. These little cheeks would be brighter. So even though it's the middle of one of the little stripes, let's get it a little brighter. And I have no wet paint underneath to mix it. I like to do wet in wet a lot of times. But I'm putting on this yellow, and I'm going to quickly go back into the orange and sort of just blend it a little bit. So it really is a little wet in wet blend there. So I would put on little blush cheeks, but I think we just need to have him look like he's a pumpkin. 
a little white to cover that little line there. Oh, how's he looking? I can tell better how he's looking in the, um, look at that creepy mouth. It's crookedy, I know, but maybe I meant to be, have it like that. You never know. What else do we need to, anything else? Um, let's see, you know what? Let's give him, I know his mouth is a little far down, but you know that little notch here underneath your nose? Let's put a little wash in there. And then it's a little brighter next to it. So I'll go back with my yellow, a little white, and I'm kind of having fun with this guy. I will finesse him a little more afterwards and I'll put some pictures in. And you know, you can always watch the uh, replay. So if you want to paint along, you can find that replay tomorrow. The tip of the nose is the closest to us. We'll do a little highlight there. Soften that a little bit. The little edge of the nostrils might made a little bit of highlight. Okay. I'm going to give him a quick uh, second coat of white on the eyes and the teeth. And then we'll, we'll go and address our bat. And look at us. Where are we? 936. Cool. Got a few more minutes. I'm pretty brave, I think, sometimes to come on and not have it planned or have painted a sample. I just wing it. So far, so good. I don't know if that's always going to be the case, but I am a little bit of a risk taker, so it is kind of fun. Hey, crafty peeps. Yes, it's nice to see you here tonight, my crafty friend. I love it um, when I'm always trying to pop on to my other crafty cohorts here on Craft Around the Clock and catch their lives. And it's so fun for me to see when you guys pop on too. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love the little community we have here. I'm kind of liking them. I didn't know what it was gonna what I was gonna end up with. I'm gonna turn them upside down and kind of do a little bit on the bat. And I'm trying not to touch all the wet bits. Oh, and we gotta do the yellow here, which even if I just do the front so you can see what it's going to look like. And let's go and get our little purple bat. I had to lighten the purple of the bat because I want to see it on top of the black. And I just want to have it a little more solid. I can see a lot of that black showing through. And I'm mixing on the fly. I'm not mixing a perfect shade. I'm just mixing white into my purple as I go. And I like to do that a lot so that it isn't all the same shade. It looks a little more natural if it's some, you know, got different shades in there. And it just needs a couple of eyes. And what I'm going to do is just dot two white eyes in there. And I'm probably going to make them lime green. But to start, I'm just going to take a little back into the brush and just give two little eyes here. Let's see if we can make them the same size and see. We'll make them lime green afterwards. And this little section here is going to be yellow. I just wanted to show you how that looks because I think it's going to look much nicer yellow. And the most fun is going to be those eyes. The teeth are super simple. Like I said, I will finesse this guy a little bit because I know in 45 minutes it's a little bit much to get him all done. But he's well on his way, right? What do you think? What do you guys think of him? Hey, Carrie. Thanks for watching, Faith. Hello. Hello. Thank you guys for watching. Um, this is kind of what I was hoping he would turn out like. A man in the moon face. Um, and, and I'm going to actually take a couple of seconds at the end. And we've got plenty of time and show you the painting I was just playing around with. I've got a couple planned. I can, I've got some sketches in here of another one that I'm going to do with gnomes trick-or-treating and then gnome-shaped ghosts flying through the sky. I think he needs lime green eyes, guys. Let's do that. Lime green uh, irises, and then we'll do a black pupil. We'll do an eyebrow. I might do red around his eyes. I would probably want to put a brighter uh, bit of white there, but you know what? I can come in after and do that. I just want to get some eyes here. And I'm going to make his eyes kind of crazy. So I'm going to, although, you know, he could be looking up. 
instead of big starey eyes, let's make him looking up. I was going to make him just kind of big eyes right in the middle, but I'm going to make him looking up. So big green, I mean, sorry. And like I said, when I'm going to finesse him a little bit, I'm going to go right the edge of the eyeball, darker green, a little dimension. But can you see how we're a little glitter looking up? I'm going to outline it a little bit, make it a little bit thin. I'm going down my red paint and I'm outline the and maybe the eyes in red. See, I kind of am copying those old vintagey paper mache pumpkins for that look. And it's just a little bit of a red outline. I don't know if you can really see it that well, but you will in the photographs. Now I want to paint all my gourds as pump Santas, but ghosts too. Some of them might be a good ghost shape. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna look at them and see what comes to me after I look at the shape. Oh, Deanna, thank you, right? I just kind of like the idea of having a, a more of a human face than the, you know, just the traditional that we see a lot. Yeah, the, if you look at those old paper mache pumpkins, you're going to see the red. Line. And I am going to go back and make this a little neater afterwards. So, um, but I just want to show you, give you an idea what it looks like. I'll probably outline in black too. We'll see. I just want you to get the general feel for him. The pupils are black. And looking the looking up still, so I'm going to kind of put them towards the upper right. Oh, we've only got about three minutes, but you got the you get the gist of it, right? I do uh, the black pupils. Like I said, I'm going to go back and kind of fix those. But the one thing I want to show you is you need a white highlight when your eyes, people, um, animals, pets, or whatnot. And you want to do them in the same spot. So if I'm doing the little white highlight at, say, 11 o'clock, a little dot, or it could be a dash, it really makes their eyes come alive when you put them in. The only thing I will do for the teeth is, um, with my liner brush probably, thin down my black paint, and we have three minutes, guys. Three minutes. Oh, we have a name. Suggestions. Throw them out there. I want to let's name him. What can we name this guy? He needs a name. And and they're going to be simple, like kind of a teeth, kind of teeth. I'm going to just get a nice thin line right across. Now remember, if you guys are a little apprehensive about thin lines and details like this, paint markers are fabulous. Um, make sure your paint is nice and dry, though. And then just uh, do your detail work with a paint marker. So this kind of crazy uh, teeth is just the lines, a little line in the center, and then just do these lines across. And that's basically him. He's going to get finessed a little bit, like I said. Maybe I might make a little bit of a red lip. I'm not sure. Alphonse, I love it. Mortimer. Oh, you guys have great ones. Hey, Alexis, look at what I'm painting. The gourds that I got today from your mom. And um, maybe you could show her the video. This would be kind of fun. Um, Alexis's mom is a fabulous painter. And um, she had uh, all these gourds. And I went over and helped myself to some today. Let me show you the painting I've been referring to. This is my painting I did yesterday. And look at all the, look at all of the pumpkin faces here. So a little happy haunting. So I was in a pumpkin kind of a mood and it translated to this guy, but where he's much bigger, we could do more of a fun face. So I can't wait to do a whole collection. Hey, thank you, Kim. Thanks, Alexis. I can show them to you in person tomorrow. I'm going to finish them up and I will put a, um, a polyurethane on him, a water-based poly. I use the Minwax Polycrel, but whatever you have, it could be a Mod Podge, any kind of water-based um, finish, which would be nice because it brightens the colors up a little bit and it gives them a little shine. So um, I'm just about ready to sign off. I hope you guys will hang out and see the next crafter because I know I will.
It's so fun to be on here with you, but it's so fun to watch everyone else as well. And I'm going to go and look at the names again, and we're going to have to uh, give this guy a proper name. Um, thanks, Kim. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate you guys popping in, and I know it's a little late, but uh, I'm going to sign off and look for the next crafter. Bye, guys. Thanks so much.